Very well. Sharing the community meeting notes in chat for anybody that didn't have it. Today is 2023-1108. Uh, please add your name to the attendees list if you are able and willing. And do we have anybody new today? Nobody knew. I think it's going to be a quiet week anyway. Um, and actually glancing at the agenda here, we don't have anything on the agenda or open floor. Is there anything that we needed to discuss today, actually? Can you guys hear me? We can, yeah. but no, <laughs> I well. can't see your screen. I am not able to share my screen. Okay. Do I can try and share the screen if let's see if that works for me here. Um, While you do that, just a big congrats on one dot one. Saw the announcement. Congrats to everybody involved. Thank you for bringing that up. Absolutely. Oh. Great. Great job, everybody. Uh, are you able to see my screen? I am. Okay. Um, do you want me to continue leading the meeting, or are you okay? Sure. If I think it's easier if the same person shares and leads. Yeah. Okay. So as mentioned, yeah, we had the the one dot one release. Um, I'll add a link here after to the release notes. But um, yeah, we released v one dot one this week, which was great to see. Um. So I'll add that to the agenda notes just to capture that. Um, outside of that, I don't see anything in agenda or open floor as previously mentioned. Does anybody have anything they'd like to raise for the open floor before we move on? Hi, uh, I see that uh, the folks from uh, monitoring are not here, uh, right? So on behalf of the monitoring team, I want you to share something. Uh, currently, I'm unable to find the, uh, the PR link, but uh, there was a discussion. We have uh, we have a pull request to add a new metric uh, in QVirt.com. The metric will uh, show the total number of virtual machines uh, created since the big, since the deployment of QVirt on the cluster. Now, uh, the reason behind creating that metric is that uh, it's more for the stakeholders or for the, for the business units who observe clusters, so they will know what is the rate of uh, new VMs creation. So it's more for, uh, it's less technical, more for like um, BI, right, for business intelligence. Now, uh, my concern was uh, once again adding such metrics in the QVirt core. On the one hand, on the other hand, we don't we currently don't have any other place for that to be. Um, I was thinking to create an enhancement uh, an enhancement ticket in QVirt uh, in the QVirt upstream. We will create a separate. Uh, we will try to create a separate controller or operator for like uh, workload related metrics. Uh, more advanced metrics, let's call it like that. But since we do need it, since we do need it in the QVirt uh, to be functional in QVirt somewhere, I was thinking to suggest to add that metric, but to have like a, to to label it as a beta, and the stable version, the graduation will come with the separate controller and operator. So for for the for the as a first step, we will add it in the Qubit core, and then uh, we will deprecate it and move it to a dedicated place where other uh, work related uh, workload related metrics will live. So, what do you think? Does anybody have any objections, uh, concerns, or uh, any other feedbacks? Can you repeat why we need to add it to QVirt? 
uh, why we need because currently we don't have uh, we don't have other place to edit and we are kind of on a rush with that metric so in the in the nearest time frame we won't be able to bring up uh, a total uh, separate operator and controller for that and then to you know to edit to the ci and the release process and then to bring it down downstream to the vendor so for that manner i was thinking to to do that move to, to move it to the qvirt core but you know temporary and create a, an enhancement uh, declaration behind it that we will uh, we will promise to move to move it away so as a beta as an alpha we will leave it qvirt qvirt and then we will just deprecate it and move it to a separate place Well, temporary solutions become them become. Yeah, I understand that uh, on one side, but from the other side, we have like um, <clears throat> we have a downstream pressure. <laughs> Let's say it like that. We have some. Uh... Well, I would, I would, I wouldn't be surprised if you actually find a Kubernetes metric which would have something uh, like this. You mean if uh, Kubernetes itself in uh, its core implementation had some uh, more advanced metrics such as total amount of pods created, something like that? Yeah, or generally objects, and then you could filter on top of it. On top of it. Yeah, know what is... Uh... Mm, that's a good suggestion, but yeah. It's yeah, still. <laughs> it's like a, it's like removing the responsibility of Qubit, but still it uh, doesn't we don't have any other place for that to live unless we will bring up some uh, some external controller who will watch these objects and filter them and create the metrics. Okay, I will think about it. Thank you, Lumo. I I will take that into account. Igor, do you have do you have the link to the PR as well? Or, or if you find it, could you add it to the, to the document here just so yeah. we have just... more details there? Because I just gave a kind of a quick summary. Um, but it'd be good to have the full PR there. Yeah, here it is. Hey, Igor, I sent it here in the chat. Is this this one? Okay. Yeah, exactly. This one, okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so this is this is the one. Uh, uh Lobo, if you could have your, uh, you know, as a as an approver uh, opinion, can you, if you would be able to add your concern about it, that would be great for you know on the matter of uh, visibility. OK, thanks, Igor. Um, anybody else? Anything yes. else for the open floor? Uh, hi. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Hey, Antonio, how are you? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Good, thank you. Uh, yeah, just a one quick thing. I mean, most of you probably already know, but uh, Migrations right now are uh, failing if you use container disks uh, um, and you're on Cryo 128. Um, um, I wanted to uh, write down the issue URL in document as well, but I couldn't. Uh, I, I posted it in the chat, but yeah, just an FYI, that's failing. I'm working on a fix which should be ready by today slash tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, right now, if you're on one one and trying to migrate content, uh, VMs with container disks with Cryo 128, uh, that's gonna fail. So just to make everyone aware. Yeah, thanks for that, Antonio. I was actually gonna yeah raise that. That, that could be a big issue for us because that's blocking us from uh, 
upgrading the version of cryo in our test lanes so we really need to try and keep up there so it'd be great to have a fix for that yeah um, yeah yeah sure um, I, and i mean what um i can say a few words more what, I, what i'm doing actually instead of relying on uh, uh the container runtime to uh publish the image digest so that we can make sure that the image running on the source pod and target pod are completely the same uh, I'll be um, I'll be just changing Kubert. I mean, it's just a patch to have Kubert computing a checksum on the root disk inside the container disk, so that we can 100% sure that it's the same disk actually when we when we do migration, and we don't have to rely on the container runtime anymore. Uh, but we'll try to pick it up with Cryo anyway because. It was kind of useful um, publishing that for us. Uh, but yeah, this is the, the part forward at least. Thank you. Cool. You mean it's the same binary? Sorry, what, Harry? You are checking that it is the same binary? This is what you are the, saying? No, the, the same disk. Uh, because the container disks, they they have a QCOW or a raw image inside. And uh, I'll, I'll just compute the checksum to check that the, that the, new, that the new container disk that is being pulled on the target node uh, corresponds to the exact one that uh, the source pod is running on. OK. It's the, it's the, root, it's the root file system. And it doesn't matter if the one of the nodes is a different uh... Architecture. Um, well, I mean that's another set of problem. But if it if it is another architecture, it would probably be built differently. I would expect so the two check checksums wouldn't match because you would have binaries built for another architecture, so the content would be different. But I'm I'm just checking the root file system. Like the root file system should be exactly the same. Uh, otherwise, I'll just fail the migration. Okay. okay cool. Thanks very much. Um, moving on to pull requests that require attention. Um, if anybody has any additional pull requests that they want to add here, they can add them now. But I'm just going to take a look at the, the first one here. So we have a couple of people on the reviewers list, but um, okay. So it's been picked up in the in the last few minutes. Thanks, thanks very much, guys. Um, okay. So if nothing else in pull request. Moving on to the mailing list. Can you all see my additional tabs? I don't know if when I'm switching tabs, if you're able to pick it up. Um, so here's the mailing list. So yeah, there was an announcement for a new repo in, underneath the Kubert organization. So Barack made an announcement here, some informa information about the new repo. Um, I suggest that you give it a read just to see what, what's, what's coming in, as part of this new project. Um, but yeah, it all looks good there. Um, and then I don't know if I see anything else. It's obviously the, the V1.1 release as well. Um, and I think the rest of them have all replies to them. So I think we're OK there um, on the mailing list review. And then look at the bugs, bug scrub. So we have a couple of issues here in the bug scrub. Uh, so this one, default routes are not being created. Um, anybody here from? SIG network or someone that could take a look at this. Can I sign it to me? Thanks, Ali. Yeah. And then the next issue. Windows Virtual Machine. 
cannot be used under nested virtual machines. Okay, so so double nested virtualization is generally not supported by any vendor. Yeah, is that is that is that what they're is that what they're saying here? So Windows virtual machines cannot be used under nested virtual machines. Okay, that does sound like double nested virtualization. Okay, so yeah, I can I can add a comment on that, just saying that this is generally not a, a supported use case for for Qbert. Is that reasonable enough? Yeah, and in the past, uh, you mentioned that I think Red Hat was looking for the bugs with nested virtualization, but uh, they might they might not uh, fix it in the end. How about yeah? But I think they can. I mean, the suggestion is they can use emulated mode, right? That's that's supposed to work. Or, or we have a problem. It's supposed to work, but it's not a production, right? Yeah, yeah it's just the performance is quite bad. I don't, I don't know if I would suggest. So just to confirm this from my own understanding, Qbert approaches don't support nest virtualization, basically. So Qbert fully kind of supported is on the bare metal only. An example, no. I'm using Qbert now on the nested virtualization in Azure. Works quite fine. What's the? We are talking, I think, about. Sorry to chime in here, but we are talking about double nested virtualization, which is not supported. Ah, okay. <laughs> and I think I just wanted to chime in here. I saw that there was actually the emulation flag was patched, right? So um, they are trying to use the emulation later on. There is a patch there inside the issue um, that I see when you scroll there. There it is. Cube kernel double N, and then if you scroll to the right and you see the develop configuration, it's use emulation too. Um, and that will be, by the way, that would be dead slow, I guess, right? Yep, exactly. And but that might be the reason for restarting the VM after exactly. trying to start it. Could be. So no, just to just to make it clear, uh, I think at least I have a, a GitHub uh, action that actually runs run, runs in an emulation mode like this something. So, but it doesn't run Windows. Maybe with Windows it, it's so slow that it kills. It. But but yes. But to get back to the nested, uh, we generally don't super nested. So. You, we only support bare metal and nested issues are more like best effort, but we can't do it with them um, much. It's most of the chemo issues like or KVM. Cool, makes sense. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Hugo. I'll, I'll get back on that issue then myself. I'll assign myself and just remind myself to, to respond on that. And then for the last issue, then yeah, we have flaky unit test here. It's been added. So Daniel, I believe you created this issue. So do you want to speak on it? Yeah, actually, this is just a tracker because um, yeah, I just encountered that one. It failed once, and I was just wanting to track it. So that's more of a tracker for me. But yeah, if people are interested in looking at sometimes flaky test them, please go ahead and take a look at that. <laughs> cool, thanks a million, Daniel. Um, and we have nothing in the, in the flaky test fixes section, but I, I'd like to hi highlight, I think Edward had a PR, I don't have the link to it immediately, but he had a PR for uh, allowing the case reporter to capture any output from the, if a test suite fails towards the end. Um, so the after suite that we call it, if it fails, it'll capture the output from that, which is great because we have an issue in the storage lanes, which this uh, fix has kind of helped us capture. So 
that was very useful. Um, I'll, I'll add it here after after the meeting. Um, and I don't have anything else. Does anybody else have anything else for the for the? No. Okay. So I think we're good to close there. Thanks for everyone for joining. Thank you. Brian, thank you for covering up for me. I'm sorry. Apologies for my issues here. No worries. We'll see you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye.